If you're watching this video, you're most likely comparing battery-powered wireless DMX up lights from a few different manufacturers. And if I'm right, you're getting ready to throw down a nice little chunk of change. If this is true, then you, my friend, are in luck because you're about to watch the mother of all reviews for three of the industry's most popular up lights and one you've likely never heard of. Here's the short list of contenders. Blizzard Lighting's big and bright Skybox 5 RGBAW. It sports seven 15 watt LEDs for a total of 105 watts at 21 watts per color. If you're looking for lots of light and a really wide beam, Blizzard has you covered here. Lighting giant Chevy's Freedom Park Quad 4i PRGBA is outdoor rated with four 10 watt LEDs with a total output of 40 watts at 10 watts per color. They have a couple of nice features like a built in folding handle and a light deflector and a decent battery life to boot. Eternal Lighting's Cube Echo MK2 RGBWA Plus UV sports four 18 watt LEDs that produce a total output of 72 watts at 12 watts per color. It has an easy to read display that's written in plain English, which makes it intuitive to navigate and also has some nice graphics that display actual color intensity via a vertical bar graph. And last but definitely not least, Ape Labs Ape Light Maxi RGBW with three 15 watt LEDs giving it a total of 45 watts at 11.25 watts per color. It's the smallest and lightest of the bunch by far with an independently verified 14 hour plus battery life along with some smart features that set it apart from anything else on the market in my not so humble opinion. Spoiler alert, I'm gonna cut to the chase and tell you that my pick for best all round uplight of the bunch by far is Ape Labs Maxi and here's why. The Maxi is incredibly easy to program and use, and the remote has a wickedly long RF range of over 200 feet. It also has a wireless DMX range of over 3,000 feet. It's massively smaller and lighter than anything in its class, but even using all four high output LED colors at once, it still has a 14 hour battery life. Its battery technology is much less volatile than lithium ion. It lasts for hundreds of charging cycles, and it's a lot less expensive to replace. It's blindingly bright and has premium optics. The Ape Lab Maxi is also water resistant and it's 100% made in Germany, not China. It has an insanely long three year warranty, which is the industry's best. And every Ape Labs product works with the same remote and is forward and backward compatible with the entire line. Now, I'm not saying it's the best uplight out there because there really is no such thing as the best uplight. I'm saying it's the best uplight for our DJ business and if the Ape Lab Maxi's features sound appealing or intriguing to you, then hang in there with me to see if one of these bad boys might be a good fit for your business. Full disclosure, after being hired by Ape Labs USA to do some comparative testing and shoot some related video, I really fell in love with these uplights. I was asked if after my testing was completed if I would share my story and I agreed with one big stipulation. I'd be allowed to report everything I found during my testing, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And guess what? Ape Labs USA agreed. Hey, look, this is not a puff piece. I hope you find this review to be educational and informational as well as brutally honest about everything I experienced during my time getting to know all of these manufacturers' uplights. One more word of warning before we continue. All four of these uplights are wireless DMX programmable, but I'm not going to get into DMX programming here. The focus of this video is to see how easily these battery operated uplights can be integrated into your gigs. There's a massive review. I'm not going to spend time giving you background on Blizzard, Chave, or Eternal because they're fairly well known and established brands here in the U.S. You're most likely not familiar with Ape Labs, however, because they've just come to our shores. They've been around the European industry since 2007, though. Ape Labs is based out of Einsing, Germany where they design, engineer, and manufacture all their LED uplighting products. Yes, you heard me. These lights are not made in China. They're made in Germany, a country whose engineering and manufacturing expertise are globally revered. In a recent global survey conducted by Statista LLC, over 47,000 respondents ranked the perceived brand strength of countries of origin. Germany came in, you guessed it, first, and China ugh, came in 49th out of 52. Now that's not to say you can't get great quality products from China, but I'm a huge fan of companies that control their entire manufacturing process, engineering, 
design, sourcing high quality components, programming the software used to control the lighting, manufacturing, and eventually shipping the product. We're going to start out our review by taking a look at the ease of non-DMX programming and the functionality of remote control for each product. How easy is each uplight to program and how powerful, flexible, and useful is the included or optional remote control? Can these lights be easily controlled without DMX? Let's find out. First, let's take a look at Blizzard Skybox 5. This is a typical four button, two line, 16 character, five by seven matrix LCD control panel. From a user perspective, it's not very intuitive. Listen, I am not the brightest bulb in the box, but I managed to bumble around and figure things out. For manual programming of the Skybox, I found myself constantly going back to the instruction manual. In fact, I even called Blizzard support once to make sure I wasn't being too thick-headed. It just wasn't easy to program. I spent way too much time thinking about what I was doing. A manufacturer can and frankly should make programming easy for end users by designing the software to keep us from having to think too much. This was a huge issue for me with these uplights. I'm not going to beat around the bush, folks. From a programming standpoint, I just couldn't warm up to the Skybox 5. Let's take a look at the remote next. The IR receiver for the remote is located on the back side of the unit, and that renders the remote virtually unusable in real world scenarios. How am I supposed to use the remote when the back of the light is typically facing the wall? On top of that, the 24 button remote control basically acted as a wireless IR extension of the control panel on the back of the unit, and that required me to look at the back panel at all times when using the remote. Not intuitive and not practical for a real gig. Look, this light is primarily intended for uplighting, right? But get this, to use the remote, you have to be on the floor between the light and the wall, pointing the remote at the rear display and the IR receiver in order to see what changes you're making. At this point, you might as well pick up the unit and access the back panel directly. I also found myself accidentally bumping one of the menu buttons occasionally when placing the unit on the floor, which required me to have to reset the function I previously selected. My star rating for the Blizzard Skybox 5, for ease of non-DMX programming, I gave it a 1 out of 5. For remote control functionality, a big fat 0 out of 5. Now, on to the Chave Freedom Par Quad 4 IP. This uplight with their four character red LED display wins the most cryptic commands award. While it was easier to navigate through the menu functions than the Blizzard, it was confusing to decrypt the abbreviations. For example, the word set is abbreviated using an upside down capital L in place of a T. This is due to the limitations of each of the seven segment digital displays they sourced. You pretty much have to either memorize or have a cheat sheet readily available to decipher abbreviations like DIM, which is displayed as DIN. My personal favorites were the codes needed for DeFi settings. Yeah, you'll probably need an Enigma machine to make any sense out of these. Hey, there is no way in HE Double Hockey Sticks I'm going to remember these settings or intuitively program these lights without some major focus on my part. The included Chevet's remote had a better feel of quality to it than Blizzard's. The IR receiver for Chevet's Freedom Par is located on the top front and center of the glass that protects the LEDs. This definitely makes it more functional and usable than Blizzard's. However, I pretty much had to be right on top of it to get any response out of the light which is the Achilles heel of infrared remotes. The commands were also fairly limited to the usual suspects, you know, blackout, auto, sound, strobe, speed, sensitivity, and percent, and fade buttons, in combination with the plus and minus buttons. With a total of 27 buttons on the remote, I could change several parameters. However, when using the remote, I had to look at the display on the back of the unit while holding the weatherproof cover open in order to see what percentage or value I had selected. Otherwise, I would be guessing about how high or low of a percentage or value the unit was registering. From what I could surmise, the remote could be used to control all lights without using DMX programming, but only in master-slave mode and then in either auto-program mode or sound-active mode, so it didn't appear as though I could control different groups of uplights with the same remote. Here was the killer for me. This is actually printed in the user manual. To ensure strong signals, the units should be elevated five feet or higher off the ground or remain in an unobstructed line of sight of each other. If my uplights have to be elevated five feet off the ground or higher to ensure a strong wireless signal, are they really uplights? Read this statement again 
and then try and imagine complying with its recommendation. They're kidding, right? Chauvet receives one star out of five for both ease of non-DMX programmability and remote control functionality. Now, if I sound like I'm being critical, that's good, because that's what I need to be to make an informed decision, just like any of you should be doing before dropping some serious coin on these uplights. Next, we're going to look at Eternal Lighting's Cube Echo MK2. Of the three uplights we've reviewed so far, it appears to me that Eternal Lighting has put the most thought into their display panel and programming. They still use a four-button navigation panel, but Eternal Lighting's LCD readout was bright, and each row was 32 characters using a 5x7 matrix. That meant most everything could be read in plain English. A lot more attention and effort seemed to go into thinking about how the user, that's me, would interact with the control panel. I mastered this menu in a matter of minutes. Blizzard and Chavez could certainly take some cues from Eternal on their programming forethought. As for the remote, its build quality was good, and of the four remotes, it was the largest. It did feel a bit clumsy because of its overall length and overwhelming because of the number of buttons on the face. It held the title for the most buttons on a remote at 44. While it allowed me to change all DMX values by one digit increments and access four custom color presets as well as select from 12 preset colors, if I wanted to simply change from a DMX value of red 0 to 125, I would have to press the red plus button 126 times. That's just crazy nuts, isn't it? The Cube Echo will technically control all lights with its IR remote, but only after setting one light to master and the rest to slave. Enabling the IR function in settings, flipping the wireless receiver switch on the bottom of the master unit and all slave units, and then selecting one of seven ID color codes via a button on each slave unit. Remember, you need to be pointing their IR remote at the top of the master uplight directly in order for it to receive commands. That's fine if the master is close, but it's not so convenient if you have to walk over to make any changes. Also, one remote cannot control multiple groups of uplights. You can see here that the Cube Echo was able to receive commands from its optional IR remote from a further distance than Blizzard's or Chavez's uplights. But that's like saying, I own the world's tallest pony. Who really cares? My star rating for Eternal Lighting's Cube Echo MK2. For ease of non-DMX programming, I gave it a 3 out of 5. For remote control functionality, I also gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. All right, now we'll take a look at the Ape Labs Maxi. A quick scan of the Maxi and it's clear we're not going to spend any time reviewing the display or menu buttons because there are none. There's just this one power button on the back of the light. Whether you're using DMX or not, this is a huge time saver. There's no menu buttons to accidentally hit or program, just one solitary power button. You can't screw this up. All programming and controls are done wirelessly. With one remote, you can mix and match an unlimited amount of Ape Labs lighting SKUs and control all of them at the same time. And by the way, this remote works from some pretty amazing distances. We're talking hundreds of feet. That means you can have up to four different uplighting scenes at your venue and control them all independently or simultaneously with this 2.4 gigahertz RF remote. Oh, and best of all, Ape Labs accomplishes this not with 44 or 27 or 24 buttons, but just nine buttons. Okay, technically it's a 10 button remote, but the button on the bottom center of the remote activates a small white LED light. All four lights we're looking at today technically have the ability to be controlled by a remote, but only Ape Labs remote is able to control an entire room of uplights without the need for complex and time consuming wireless DMX setup or the hassle of master-slave programming and syncing issues. Ape Labs specifically wanted to create a remote for their uplights that could be used in 90% of all uplighting scenarios without the need for DMX programming. And this is a real game changer. And get this, if you're running these lights, say, the week before, but just wanted to use the remote for a gig this week, you don't need to change any settings. All Ape Lab uplights automatically look for a DMX transmitter when you turn them on. If there isn't any signal, they go into RF remote control mode automatically, simple dimple. The Ape Labs remote is the only one in our test group that can control any number of uplights without having to hover over an IR receiver. This is because Ape Labs uses 2.4 gigahertz RF technology to transmit commands. 
And that means you can control an entire room of uplights from anywhere in that room without pointing the remote in any particular direction. Hallelujah! Ape Lab's specs state that the range for the Ape Lab remote is 100 feet. Our independent tests showed accurate control at over 600 feet, but more on that in a bit. If you want to see how easy it is to use the remote, again, I've placed a link in the description below with a detailed explanation and walkthrough. Now we're going to do remote distance tests. In my first distance test of the Ape Lab's remote, I went to a local soccer park and set up three Ape Lab Maxis on three corners of a soccer field. Here you can clearly see how each light responds as a single group and in separate groups. The furthest distance in this test was 300 feet diagonally for the Ape Lab's Ape Light number two. Again, the user manual states the remote is functional for 100 feet, so Ape Lab's stated remote distances are clearly very conservative. This got me thinking, just how far can these lights be controlled by the remote? So I placed the same three maxis at 2, 4, and 600 feet and set out to answer this question. The first test shows three lights connected to group one via the remote at measured distances as I said of 200, 400, and 600 feet from my position. It worked like a charm. The remote controlled all three lights easily. You can see me putting them through their paces here. In the second test, I assigned each maxi to its own group to test each group's ability to operate independently. And then I synced all three groups with a long button press on the remote. After doing this test, I became fairly certain this remote could fully function in just about any venue you threw at it. If your venue is larger than this scenario, then you can always use the wireless DMX functionality and you'll be able to connect to distances of over 3,000 feet between lights. This is because each light has a repeater that rebroadcasts the signal to each successive Ape Labs uplight. My star rating for the Ape Labs Maxi on ease of non-DMX programming, I give it a 5 out of 5. And the remote controls functionality, I gave it also a 5 out of 5. Are you starting to see why I fell in love with these uplights? If not, hang in there with me. Size and weight testing. When it comes to lighting, size and weight matters for DJs. Many of us have or are looking to purchase 12, 18, or even 24 uplights. And with the average battery-powered wireless uplight weighing between 5 and 10 pounds, and some resembling the size of a small toaster, we're talking about a significant amount of size and weight. It's really hard to get across the relative size of these four uplights using video, so I thought this visual might give you a better perspective. Look how much smaller the Maxi is than the others. It's so much smaller than the others that I had to go out and buy a damn toaster to show you. And here's something to consider as well. Look at the total weight of six or more of these uplights packed up in their respective road cases. There are some significant transport and storage factors to deal with. And don't forget, where do you hide some of these road cases while your uplights are being used? Back in your trailer? Eh, because of their small size, we found that we could store the Ape Labs cases in a storage closet or other out of the way location without attracting too much attention. In terms of size and weight, Ape Labs Ape Light Maxi has a huge advantage over the other guys. With the other guys, you need two people to move these road cases up steps, over curbs, or into vehicles. In this time lapse video, our lovely assistant Molly is packing up 12 of the Maxis and her male counterpart is packing up his 12 up lights. You'll notice Molly doesn't have cords to deal with. And that's because Ape Labs has a modular case design that allows you to simply drop any of their lights into the case and the charging connections are instantly docked at the bottom of each uplight's slot. All the other cases from Blizzard, Chave, and Eternal require you to physically plug each light in using a PowerCon or IEC connector. In this comparison test, both our roadies fill two cases that store six uplights each, but Molly finishes four times faster and she still has time to help her fellow crew member carry his hundred plus pound rolling cases down the steps. Now I wouldn't recommend recreating this picture but here's my wife holding a total of 24 ape light maxis in four cases. It's pretty damn impressive. Find me any DJ who can hold 24 up lights in their cases long enough for me to take about 20 pictures and I'll buy that man a beer. God I love that woman. And how tough are these ape light maxis? Let's just say they stand up to tremendous pressure, literally. They each have a rated load weight of 154 pounds. That's the maximum that can be placed on top of each unit, which means you can highlight centerpieces, liquor bottles, or your favorite roadie. 
We all know time is money, and the more time and people it takes to pack up and transport your gear, the more money it costs you. And compared to the others, Ape Labs is simply faster and easier. Here are my star ratings on each uplight size and weight. Blizzard is the heavyweight of the group and should frankly go on a diet. I like the positive locking functionality of a PowerCon connector, but not for uplighting. This type of plug is simply not convenient for this application. I give the behemoth of the group a one star out of five. It's too damn big and heavy. Chave has a decent footprint. I like the built-in folding handle and glare deflector, but I don't like its weight or having to lift up the rear weatherproof cover to plug in the IEC connector. I've seen IP rated lights before that have separate covers for each plug or switch. I'm not sure why they chose to go this route. I give it a two out of five stars. Ternal is much lighter than the other two, but has a large footprint and isn't really convenient to pick up. You also need to move the stand to access the IEC connection when charging it. It gets three stars out of five. Eternal does now offer a smaller case that holds five uplights and it comes in at around 50 pounds packed. It's lighter than their other option, but not much less expensive and it doesn't look as if one person could carry it very easily. Ape Labs is a lightweight of the bunch and it is so nice not to have to plug or unplug a cord into these uplights to charge them in their case. This system is easy peasy. I'm giving the Ape Lab Maxi a 5 out of 5. Now we're on to battery technology and longevity testing. All manufacturers' manuals have published run times for various settings. Frankly, all the published numbers seem credible except Ape Labs. Their user manual and website both claim a 14-hour duration using a nickel metal hydride battery technology that's been around, frankly, for quite a while. Their claims just seemed a bit unrealistic to me, especially given the old battery technology. So I conducted some real-world tests. Through the miracle of time-lapse, once again, you're about to watch a short series of battery longevity tests using a combination of one, two, three, and four LEDs. All LEDs are set to 255, their brightest intensity. The first test shows battery life using a single color and the resulting test. All uplights had respectable numbers in this first test. Blizzard's battery lasted 12 hours and 25 minutes. Eternal's LEDs went dark a few minutes later at 12 hours and 36 minutes. Ape Lab's battery lasted the second longest at almost 14 and a half hours, and Chave had the longest duration at a very impressive 22 hours and 58 minutes. However, once I started adding more colors, and consequently placing more demands on the batteries, things started to get interesting. Here I tested the duration of each uplight using the two colors, green and blue. Each was set at intensities of 255. The Maxi was the last man standing at 14 hours and 57 minutes with Chavez, Eternal, and Blizzard coming in at second, third, and fourth place respectively. This third test shows the Ape Light Maxi beginning to pull away from the others. Blizzard went dark at the five hour mark, and you can see that Eternal hung in there for just over six hours. Chavez brought in a performance of nine hours and 45 minutes, which is very respectable, but Ape Labs lasted the longest in this more demanding test at 14 hours and eight minutes. My last test shows the result of four colors, red, green, blue, and white. However, since Chavez's uplight had amber and no white, we use that color as an alternative to white, representing its fourth LED in this test. This was the most demanding test, and frankly, Ape Labs walked away with it. Blizzard was the first to bow out at 3 hours and 44 minutes. Eternal's battery gave up the ghost 2 hours later at 5 hours and 44 minutes. Chevet hung in there for 7 hours and 49 minutes. But Ape Labs almost doubled that worthy performance by holding out for an amazing 14 hours and 43 minutes. If I hadn't conducted these tests myself, I'm not sure if I would have believed it. The Ape Labs Maxi consistently outlasted the others in arguably three of the more demanding tests, and it uses the proven and safe nickel metal hydride battery, not lithium ion like the other three. After my testing, I did some serious research on the two battery technologies, and here's what I found out. The biggest advantages lithium ion has over nickel metal hydride are weight and its ability to hold a stored charge over a longer period of time. Both of these are really non-issues for Ape Labs though, because before a gig I charge my uplights, and I also charge them after my gigs. So the advantage of longer storage times isn't really an issue for me. Now it may be for you, but it isn't for me. 
And even with the heavier batteries, Ape Labs is still the lightest of the bunch. Through clever design and engineering, and a focus on miniaturization, the overall weight of each Ape Labs uplight is almost three times lighter than Blizzard's Skybox. So how does Ape Labs accomplish this? As you can imagine, they, they don't let us out much. Ape Labs resident engineer and software designer extraordinaire Gisbert Mueller says their secret is a combination of things. Their software consistently monitors and adjusts power consumption, and Ape Labs sources super high efficiency LEDs from one of the best manufacturers in the world. Then they direct their light through premium German optics, which enables them to use a less volatile and much less expensive battery technology than lithium ion. And by the way, the batteries in all Ape Lab uplights are user replaceable. All three of the other brands state no user serviceable components inside. In fact, Eternal and Chavez owner's manuals state you'll void your warranty by attempting to repair or tamper with their products. So make sure to add shipping and labor to the cost of a battery replacement if you're considering Blizzard, Chavez, or Eternal. With an investment like this, you're going to keep these lights for a while, and most likely the batteries are going to need to be replaced at some point. All rechargeable batteries have a finite number of cycles and other variables that take a toll on them as well. So just remember to factor this inevitable cost into your decision. Then there's the safety issue. Both the Chavez, Freedom Par, and Blizzard Skybox Owner's Manual specifically state their units should be placed 20 inches or 50 centimeters from the wall or other objects. Is that really practical though? Do I really have to choose between having my guests trip over the uplights and risking setting the place on fire? Blizzard goes even further by saying to place the skybox in a fireproof box, to be in attendance at all times when the batteries are charging, and to have a fire extinguisher present. Who the hell is going to do all that? And look, I get it. The attorneys make the manufacturers post these warnings. But you have to acknowledge that lithium-ion batteries don't exactly have the best reputation, do they? There are plenty of well-documented cases of lithium-ion batteries exploding or catching on fire. Coincidentally, Eternal had no warnings or limitations on their batteries, but did caution users about never flipping a non-existent battery button and a red power button on at the same time. I think this might have been meant for an older unit, and the documentation perhaps wasn't updated. So here are some quick facts on nickel metal hydride battery technology. It can be recharged hundreds and hundreds of times. There's no memory effect. There's no need to keep lights 20 inches from walls or other objects. There's no need to charge them in a fireproof box. You can leave them unattended while they charge. And this is a biggie. You don't need to have a fire extinguisher present. They can be fully discharged. That's not going to hurt them. They're very stable. They're not volatile or explosive. And they're extremely inexpensive. They're less than half the price of the lithium ion batteries. They can be replaced by you, the owner, if needed, without voiding the warranty as well. How's that? My assessment of all four uplights for battery life, safety, and technology is as follows. Let's start with Blizzard. It's the only one of the four uplights with an internal fan. I have to think that cooling fan eats up some of that precious battery life. I'm also really floored with all the warnings and restrictions concerning the placement and charging of the Skybox. With seven 15-watt LEDs and the cooling fan constantly running, You'd expect it to have the shortest battery life of our four units, and you'd be correct. So I gave the Skybox two stars out of five. Chavez was the second best in the bunch for overall battery performance, with three second places and one first place. But it takes a ding for having to be placed 20 inches from the wall and the suggested placement of at least five feet in the air. Chavez's Freedom Series also requires the user to place their uplights upside down in its road case to charge, and then you have to pull it out and place it in the case in an upright position before transporting it. I was impressed with its battery performance, however, and I give it 3.5 out of 5 stars. Eternal's Cubeco MK2 performed well, and the manual talked a lot about setting DMX values lower when mixing colors in order to extend battery life, which is true. However, that takes research and programming time. While it didn't have quite the longevity of the Chavez, it still had an admirable battery life, even when pushed. It received three stars out of five. Ape Labs gets 4.5 out of five stars for their surprising combination of endurance, safety, and ease of charging. I really never expected them to even compete with the three others in this category, let alone win handily in three out of four tests. Let's see where we're at so far. Here's our running tally of how our lights have fared up until now. We've reviewed the ease of non-DMX programming and the functionality of the remote control for each product. 
We've also tested remote distance and compared relative size and weight. And now we've added the battery longevity tests. This next test, though, is arguably the most important of all. What do these uplights look like when placed at a venue or gig? Specifically, can the Ape Labs Maxi compete with uplights rated as much as two and a half times its output? By the way, I've posted several additional video links of side-by-side -side comparisons in the description below for anyone who wants to geek out. But one word of warning, a camera cannot truly do justice to the dramatic transformations and impact all of these uplights can bring to a venue. The human eye can capture so much more detail and nuanced color changes than even the best camera in the world can. So what you'll see with any of these comparisons is merely relative performance. With all variables considered, ambient light, ceiling height, room lighting, number of uplights used, your results will look different at every venue. Please keep that in mind as you view these comparisons. With that being said, what do these uplights look like side by side? I ran red, green, blue, and white for all lights except Chavez Freedom Par, which only has red, green, blue, and amber. I used the Maxi's RGBW preset to create amber, and I thought it was pretty damn good compared to the others who use an actual amber LED. As a comparison, in one of the shots, you'll see my attempt to have Chavez RGBA create a white. It was noticeably different than the others who had a white LED, and from my perspective, it didn't look very natural. Now a side note, would I like to see Ape Labs add amber and maybe even UV sometime? Sure, but for my needs, these lights are great. They mix a pretty decent amber, and I would personally never use UV in uplighting, but if they ramped up the power enough to compensate for the relative loss in RGBW performance when adding more diodes, even more color mixing possibilities would be nice. As for my two test locations, I used an industrial warehouse with 23-foot ceilings and a tobacco barn that was converted into a gorgeous wedding venue in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. It's called The Booking House. Check it out. Without getting too subjective, I really wanted to see any significant difference in the visual aesthetics and actual output between these lights. Would I be pleased with these lights' ability to cast light? That's the bottom line. I came to the ultimate conclusion that I'd be totally happy with the light output or brightness, color selections, and beam pattern of any of these uplights. That conclusion allowed me to go deeper into my selection process and make decisions based on all the other tests that you've just witnessed. If you're a rule follower, however, you won't like having to jump through the hoops that Chave and Blizzard are recommending in their manuals. I know if anything happens at a venue and you haven't followed the manufacturer's requirements, you'll most likely still have coverage from your insurance company but don't expect them to renew your policy. Oh, I almost forgot to mention the pied de resistance, what each manufacturer is willing to back their products with. The $64,000 question, what's their warranty coverage? Blizzard, Chave, and Eternal all require the following. A return authorization, okay. Proof of purchase receipt, you must be the original owner of the equipment, eh. You pay to ship the product to the company for repair. Makes sense. If you open the unit, it voids the warranty, even if you're just replacing batteries, as stated by Chave and Eternal. Blizzard has a two-year warranty, which, by the way, I need to take advantage of because this knob broke in half during my testing. Hey, it looks like a decent warranty, and it seems standard for most name-brand industry lights. A thorough read of the terms reveals I need to purchase the light from an authorized dealer, so watch out, Amazon buyers. And I need to return the product in its original box. Hmm. Chavez warranty is 24 months as well, and has very similar warranty language as Blizzard and Eternal, with one big caveat that made me, hmm. Check this out. If I buy a Chavez light manufactured 18 months ago, my warranty is only good for 18 months, not 24. Also, how do I know the date of manufacture when ordering online? Do these lights have a shelf life? Come on, Chave, it's kind of a crappy way to limit your liability if that's your objective. Eternal impressed me right up until I saw the length of their warranty. One year is all they offer. This doesn't exactly give me a lot of confidence in their products. Again, Ape Labs comes out ahead here with their industry-leading three-year warranty. Want to replace your own batteries? No problem. Want to buy a used set of uplights less than three years old and still have them covered by Ape Labs? Just get the previous owner to provide you with the original sales receipt and you're covered. Hell, these units are even splash-proof. 
Gross. Ape Labs is a high-tech coating that they apply to all their electronics in the Ape Light Maxi. So an occasional rain shower or even an incident like this isn't going to knock them out of commission. Then I got to thinking, everything else with the Maxi has outperformed its specs. So I decided to really test this splash-proof claim. Now remember, the Maxi is not officially IP rated, let alone submersible. Don't put it in your pool. This is just German build quality at work. This was intended as a stress test, and although Ape Labs prevailed, their warranty would not cover damage from a submerged fixture. So again, don't attempt this. After these tests though, I can confidently call these fixtures splash proof. In the event your uplight does need some special attention during the three year warranty, Ape Labs USA has a simple process. Call in and get an RMA number, check. Send in the light with your RMA number and receipt, check. And they'll take care of the rest. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for hanging in there. Hopefully you've learned a few things about uplights, including that they don't need to be prohibitively complicated to use. In fact, I trust you've seen how simple it can be and quite frankly should be to use uplighting in most cases. Lastly, I've put the manufacturer's minimum advertised pricing in the description below this video for all four of our contenders. And yes, Ape Labs lights are very competitively priced. They're not the most expensive, nor are they the cheapest, but from everything I've seen, I feel I'm getting a great light for a really great price. Rumor has it, the mobile app is being developed to enable users to even have more control over their lights, and that means current versions too. I don't have a release date yet, but I'm told it's soon. That's classified. I only reviewed the Ape Light Maxi today, but it's one of a family of uplights and accent lighting from Ape Labs. You can check all their products out at apelabsusa.com. Keep your eyes and ears tuned in for this company. They're definitely onto something big with their innovative designs and simple but powerful features. Prost!